Hallelujah. Is there anybody just need more of him? Just, just more of him. Just desire more of the Lord. Hey. We invite you in the room. We invite you in the room. So dwell here, dwell here, you can move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, dwell here, dwell here. You can move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, dwell here. Dwell here. Move whatever's in your way. Whatever took your place, dwell. We need you, Lord. You can move, Lord. Whatever's in, whatever's in. Say it. Well, well, you can do whatever whatever. Well, well, we want you tonight, Lord. We need you right now to move whatever. music dwell come on just the voice is saying dwell here oh you can move Lord whatever's in your way whatever dwell here not just the church but in our heart we want you to move Lord whatever You want him to move in your life. I dare you to lift your hands and just give it unto him. Come on, say, Lord, have your way. Whatever's in my life, whoever's in my life, I need you to move like never before. Say. Well, hello, CSRA. Hello, everybody out there Hi. in Radio Land. Hello. hello. This is Battle Ready. We are with you tonight at 7 o'clock. A few minutes after, we wanted to let that song play. Um, <clears throat> we're glad to be with you. We hadn't been here in a while. We are live in the studio in we New are Ellington. Alive. Yes, and, um, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are alive. Hallelujah. And we are. 
um, excited to be here with you tonight. We got yes. some topics to cover, some things that are riding heavy on our hearts, and um, we got some specific instructions this past week about making sure we release what's on our hearts while we're here, that the microphone sitting in front of us is important, yes. and we need to let what's in our heart, what, what the Lord has shared with us, go out over those airwaves so we're going to take that seriously father god i live to you this broadcast i live to you our ability to repent i live to you the listeners and their ability to receive father i thank you for this radio station i thank you for this battle ready show i thank you for the battle ready family father this is not a show but because it's on the radio we have a tendency to say that. So we just lift it to you now. We ask you for the hearts and the minds, the lives of the listeners, Father. We ask you to save them where, right where they are, to meet them in the path that they're on. Show them who you are, Father. I lift to you our lives and our families, and we ask you, Father, for protection. We thank you for our leadership and our pastor. We thank you for the he, his ownership of this radio station and his yes. Father yeah. God, we thank you for the other ministers that come from this radio station out over the airwaves. And we lift it to you now and ask you that you get the glory. We ask that you your will would be done in the lives, the hearts, the minds of those that are able to hear this, even on a rebroadcast, Father. In Jesus' yes. name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. All right. Yeah. So who's here tonight? Who we got? We got everybody. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're back, Donna. Okay. So to my left, we have Cassie Johnson. All right. Hello. And to her left, Connie Story. And Donna Roberts. And I am Rachel Glanton. And we are so pleased to be here with y'all tonight. Um, this is our 41st show. Tonight, 40. our focus 40. is October. We yes. will occupy mm -hmm. until he comes. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yes. Our um, subtitle would be the return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the gates. Right. The gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the one thing. What's that one thing? Our relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. That's yes. right. Our overriding That's right. question tonight is, what is the condition of your heart? Mm -hmm. Where are you in this thing called the return where are you mm -hmm. in your ability to connect with the lord in your intimacy um on the 26th we had a national day of repentance a national day called the return there was a uh, many many thousands of people on the on the mall um square in washington dc and some people um really got a lot out of that some people uh feel like maybe not enough has happened to bring this nation back mm -hmm. to the Lord. Yes. So we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about your heart. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about where you're at. And we're going to start our show like we always do. Um, you want to do the disclaimer for me, somebody? I'll do it. Oh, come Go on. on ahead. <laughs> Since that may be the reason we need a disclaimer. Um, the views and opinions expressed by anyone on Battle Ready Crew are not necessarily the views and opinions of those who own, operate, or staff this radio station Hallelujah. that is our disclaimer in other words don't call the radio police if we say something you don't <laughs> like just just contact us we'll try to pray about it and talk you through it okay hallelujah yes. take hallelujah. just a second and share this feed on facebook it'll be uploaded to youtube afterwards after after um the show is over um we also have an Instagram page, and you can reach out to us on there, mm -hmm. or also on Facebook. You can message us, or you can email us at battleready999 at gmail.com. I encourage you to do that. Right. I encourage you to let us pray with you, help us to um, partner with you on that. Mm -hmm. And if, in fact, you have somebody around you that's praying, or you... Uh, know somebody that will lift up a prayer immediately, I encourage you to reach out to yes. them, too. Right. There's there's nothing more important than having someone to stand in agreement with you in prayer. And while I'm on that, uh, I'll go ahead and get our little introduction over with. You know, when you decided to follow the Lord Jesus, to make him king of your life, Lord of your heart, you became a member in the army of God. You were immediately enlisted. You are in a war zone. 
And what we do here at Battle Ready is we help you stand. We help you pray. We teach you. We we, we stand with you. We're here to take back our towns. We're here to take yes. back our children. We're here to take back our churches, our cities, our states, our country for the glory of God. And we intend to use this platform, this broadcast to wreck hell. Mm -hmm. I, I don't yes. know about you guys, but I lost some stuff along the way. Mm -hmm. and, and I intend to wreck hell. I intend to make hell pay for everything I've lost. Mm -hmm. And we do that Hallelujah. by witnessing. We do yes. that by filling heaven with the treasures of heaven. And mm -hmm. what are the treasures of heaven? Souls. Mm -hmm. It's yes. all about the souls yes. of men. Here we Amen. Go. Amen. All right. So we usually talk about what's happened to us this week mm -hmm. or this month. Oh. Oh, one minute. And, and then give me a one minute. How did God turn that around for you? What strategy to give you? Was it a song? Was it a scripture? Was it a... Did he speak to you? Come on, let's do that. Who wants to start? I don't want to start. Connie. Connie Connie's got a good one. <laughs> uh, come Connie's on, got a manifestation on her face. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me to tell you what God has done for me in, in a minute would be virtually impossible. All right, we'll try right. it. Try it in two. But um, I'll give you tell five. Tell about your black eye, Connie. Okay. <laughs> Kathy says you can have five. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I had a, I had a meeting with God. There's only one way to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, I took time to make an appointment with him, mm -hmm. and he answered. Hallelujah. And I have been being blessed ever since. But I got sick this week, and I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. and they were trying to diagnose me first with cancer, mm -hmm. and then with some kind of uh, temporal something that eventually would take my sight mm -hmm. and we just came against that in the yes, name of jesus did. immediately mm -hmm. and then today i'm making a prayer closet in a closet <laughs> and i am pushing up on the top shelf and as i did there was an arm of the chair wait wait you got the results back for some tests oh yes i'm i'm great and I'm the fine. results said nothing's there no I'm, I'm what good. they were looking for they couldn't find no yeah there's nothing. Hallelujah, jesus. There's nothing. all right now go back to the chair so anyway, I'm pushing up on there to fix my prayer closet, and the arm of the chair falls down and hits me right across the eye that he said that the blockage was in. Mm -hmm. And immediately I knew that the devil was trying to take That's me right. out, but That's he didn't. Right. I'm here. Hallelujah. I've got a black so eye. It could be the devil trying to take you out or the Lord trying to knock that blockage loose. Well, it could be. <laughs> whatever. Whatever, Either way. whatever he wants to do. <laughs> Either way, my goose egg is now the size of a walnut, but I oh, do have yeah. a black eye. Okay. But anyway, I'm alive. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Alive and well. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise and all God. that happened today. All that happened today. Hmm. Yes. Wow, what a long day. I'm telling you what. Goodness. Mm. All right. Well, who wants to come next? Go ahead, Cassie. Okay. All <laughs> right. Um, these past two weeks have been kind of rough for me, just emotionally dealing with a lot of stuff that I didn't know I hadn't dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, and so sifting through all that, God has just showed me his faithfulness and mm -hmm. his love for me that even when I feel like I'm mm -hmm. falling apart, he's right there yes. and he's holding me together and it's okay to cry yes. in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. And just like how, <laughs> how God uses even the smallest events to show us that maybe we haven't dealt with this and then he walks us through it he didn't just bring up all these emotions and say hey here you go figure it out he like walked me through it and put people around me to help me walk through it and so he's just been faithful this whole time yes Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. all right well i'll go next go ahead and i'll say this that the, the last several um weeks have been an uh, up and down arena of emotions for me but it's been a, for a several several different kinds of reasons i've spent some time with family and earlier this month <coughs> um really look forward to more of that um and at work it, my work situation has been pretty intense and i kept thinking it would eventually lighten up it's just not done that mm -hmm. um but i have come to a resolution about work um i gave a um I had a chat with one of my bosses and have come to a decision. I'm not quite sure what the time frame is going to be, but, um, you know, I've got work I've got to do for the mm -hmm. Lord. Yes. I've got Amen. things that have to be done. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, here's the thing. I love what I do. 
Yeah. I love I love my job. I love the people I'm working with. I don't necessarily um, like everything that happens. Right. And I want to be careful when I say that because sometimes when bad things are going on, um, you know, you kind of take it out on each other. And some yes. of that has happened. So the way the Lord has shown me how to deal with this, the strategy he's given me is I've had you there to learn some <clears throat> things. I've had you there to pray for people that wouldn't necessarily receive prayer. Mm -hmm. Any, you know, any significant, consistent over and over again prayers he's even woke has waken me up to pray for someone who i've had a struggle with mm -hmm. at work and um i've been you know kind of shocked by that not i shouldn't be but you know he's he just never ceases to stop amazing mm -hmm. me in the ways that he will the effort he will go to to reach someone so um i've been very tickled about that i've had a real adjustment in my own attitude um i've done really good in my family for a couple of years done really good in my personal relationships for a couple of years this work situation has been completely different mm -hmm. and there is things constantly ready to provoke at work mm -hmm. so i've had to learn how not to take that bait mm -hmm. and Amen. you know for years i had not had to deal with that bait so I've had to learn how this last few months I've really taken seriously not taking the bait, mm -hmm. but recognizing it and finding myself praying. And I've even gotten in trouble for praying at work. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> it's okay. I'm okay with that. You know, mm -hmm. um, I call my get pastor. In trouble, get in trouble for that. Yeah, I call my pastor and I said, mask. I need you to be my pastor right now. And he did a great job being my pastor. Really, really he yeah. helped me through that very, very effectively. So um, shout out to Pastor Schaefer on shout that. Shout out to Pastor. Loved it. I mean, he, he's just great. So, and yeah. I've had a friend experience the same kind of thing. Um, so it, it's taught me how to pray for her too. Yeah. All right. How about you, Donna? Um, Donna, before you say something. I um, didn't know if y'all wanted to do some shout outs on the thing uh, first, but mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, anyway, my devotion today is was about complaining yeah. And it was about, if you've got a complaint, come to me. Uh -huh. Tell me about it. Uh -huh. Kick, scream, holler, do what you need to do. Because I already know. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I need that communication with you. Hallelujah. But when you complain to other people, then you're looking that, then it looks as though you're not trusting in me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, then it looks bad for me that you're complaining, you're mm -hmm. grumbling, you're not showing the love of God. Right. So I just wanted to say that, that mm -hmm. in all of our struggles that we have to remember if we're going to show out, mm -hmm. show out to God. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. That's right. That's good. Well, the Lord kind of stopped me today at work. I was trying to complain. I said, well, let's let me stop right here. Thank you, Lord. I have a job because <laughs> my son likes to eat. I like to eat. So, yeah, I'd stop complaining. Do y'all want to do some shout outs before I talk about my little week? Or no, go ahead. My we'll get life. the shout outs after that. My go ahead. Life. Well, I decided tonight to wear my counterattack shirt because, you know, the enemy know. has done everything he can do to keep me out of ministry, mm -hmm. period. To keep me out of the church, to keep me away from my friends, to keep me away from the radio station, just to keep me down. And I'm like that weeble wobble thing. I just keep getting back up. I just keep getting back Hallelujah, up. Hallelujah. Even Jesus. when I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through something, a divorce, okay? I went through a divorce back in May. Something, and I fought really hard for my marriage for years, even though we were separated. I fought. And when it finally yes. ended, it knocked me off more than, more than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. It totally knocked me. My feet just came out from under me. The wind left me. I was just... You know, I thought I'd be okay after a couple of weeks after I rolled around in the floor, but it turns out I was not okay. And, uh, you know, the devil will kick you when you're down. Oh, yeah. Just when you're thinking, you know, your breakthrough's coming and he, the, it looks like the breakthrough. It looks like the answer, but it wasn't the answer. And I was walking around like three or four months thinking that this was the answer and it was the enemy deceiving me the whole time. And I'm just now coming out of that and it's very confusing mm -hmm. it's very um it's depressing it hurts you know just when you thought you couldn't be crushed anymore he just beat me to a pulp mm -hmm. and that's where i've been the last few months i'd love to tell you that i've been spiritual i'd love to tell you that i that i read my bible every day but i didn't i've been about as spiritual as that tree outside i've been very <laughs> um very dry Hallelujah. Um, and didn't want to come to church didn't want to be around people didn't want to get up my house looked like like 10 
fr you know frat boys lived in it it looked terrible i didn't want to get up and clean it you know but today i'm in my car you know anxiety all those things i've been delivered from keep are trying to come back mm -hmm. trying to come back mm -hmm. tell me i was never delivered and if you're going to get it this time all those same habits the same sins that i turned to before tried to come back and then yeah, I beat that's myself how the up. Work. Right. Then mm -hmm. I beat myself up for even considering mm -hmm. going back. Mm -hmm. But this morning, you know, I'm in my car, the whole anxiety's coming. I got tears rolling down my face and I get a scripture on my phone from a friend talking about, you know, John fourteen and twenty seven, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And then I get to work. And I talk to someone. And, and the main thing about what he was telling me was don't panic, mm -hmm. which reminded me what Zach told me months ago. I hear the Lord say, don't panic. And then later on today, I get another text from a totally different person. Don't panic. And I just, oh, God, thank you. <laughs> thank you. My daddy, you know, is hearing me. Mm -hmm. He's listening. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, I walked out of my boss's office, sat down in my chair. And I mean, I just felt, you know, I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It lifted off of me. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. And what I, the thing that I've drawn from in all of this, it, when, you're, when I'm feeling suicidal, mm -hmm. I've been there in the last few months i felt like just going to the morgue crawling in crawling in a coffin and just laying there until the thing happens you know i don't know if anybody else has ever felt that way but through all of it it's been about worship mm -hmm. and making myself get down on my floor face down with the lord whether i heard him speak or not mm -hmm. here i am mm -hmm. it's Hallelujah. worship and it's praise it's staying in communication with god's people and being accountable mm -hmm. and that's what i've had to do you know the past few months and i've got I, you know please jesus i need to be out of this i need to be coming out of this soon mm -hmm. and i felt it i felt it today i felt something break off of me today Praise amen God. thank you jesus hallelujah. hallelujah well that's something to shout about isn't hallelujah it? yes <laughs> i yes. know that i know that there's been very random times over multiple occasions that i have been called into prayer for you yes ma'am and um you know just been com completely undone over and i most of the time don't even know what you're struggling with but mm -hmm. god you know he calls people in to pray for us yes, when we does. are in need yes right and i know i'm not the only one that has prayed for you so i'm just so yes, thankful thank for any release any kind of relief that you have received yes and it does listen if god prompts you to send a text to someone and doesn't make any sense to you send it anyway mm -hmm. if yes. god prompts you to put a card and somebody sent me a card in the mail someone from church bless my heart if some if god prompts you to send a card send a card yes call text whatever it is you don't mm -hmm. know when that person is just barely mm -hmm. hanging on and we're friends but we don't talk every day that's right mm -mm. y'all don't hear you, you you know you don't hear me crying every day and everything that's going on but the lord you know there's no distance there's no space right. in the spirit and if he leads you to pray for me you don't have to call me up and say i'm praying for you what's that's wrong right. with you just because it might it. be none of your business the holy spirit knows <laughs> okay so just pray and that, that's part of our show tonight that's is right. being obedient yes. yeah Hallelujah. so when you're led to to pray for someone or to to send them a text message right. pick up the phone do it right yeah so we want to talk about our facebook rules okay the way this thing works is if you put a comment in the feed we're going to mention your name if you do not have a your comment name. in the feed we are not going to mention your name because there are some people that would just rather remain anonymous and that's okay with us so okay. if you want us to give you a shout out we need you to say hey hello whatever um give us something in the in the feed for us to comment uh, on and yeah. if you do not don't be upset because we're not going to mention you if you don't. Right. Just okay. because there are some people that would rather so, us not. If you want your name said, tell us. Yes, yeah, right. In the comments. I'll shout your name. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to give, give a shout out because I got some people on here. Um, Iris Rose says, hi, ladies. Hi. Hello. We missed yes. you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Loretta said, hello. Mm -hmm. Loretta Lawson, we work with. And hello, ladies. Hey, Loretta. Hey, Loretta. Um, uh, Audrey Riviera said, good evening, That's ladies. That's my girl. I yep. love you, Audrey. Yeah um elizabeth vesperman now this is Hi. one of my this is one of my charleston people here uh -oh. right here elizabeth i just want to say hey girl hey. How's, how's your daughter <laughs> how's life it's so i'm so glad you're here with how's us your mom, yes. Yes. you're gonna um enjoy this show hang in here mm -hmm. um i love you girl 
Audrey, so Audrey said, I'm so blessed and thankful when total strangers will speak a word of edification. That's in my right. Life. Yes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Love one another says, yes. Yeah. Yes. James uh -huh. holds back yes. says, hey, ladies. Anybody hey, else? James. Y'all got anything else? I, you got them all. I have I did, a lot, yep. but we'll go. Come on, give them. Uh, no, no, no. I don't have my Facebook up. Oh, oh, oh. Because I'll be calling people out. <laughs> don't be doing that. Don't be doing that. We can't be having that. <laughs> don't worry. So right. I just leave mine. Uh, and I want to say one other thing. You know, a shout out to Peculiar People. Yes. Your yes. show last night, Cassie. Wow. Off the chain. Yes. Didn't those men do a great job? Yes, I was just did. along for the ride. I'm telling it was you, great. Man, it was awesome. Yeah, I loved was every good. second of it. I'm glad you enjoyed I it. I missed the little section I got to go back and try to catch, but um, oh. I, every part I heard, I was like, you. Yeah, y'all need to pray I for that little spinning like demon on baby. my phone because every time I get to try to watch something, it goes spin, spin, spin. Didn't get to watch it live. I, I did it afterwards, you know, today during my all my crunching number stuff. But um, I always want to try to catch it live. Sometimes I was I, just a squalling like a baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I was, I was trying not to to cry in my chair. I was like, all right. So if y'all want to know what we're talking about, you need to tune in to Peculiar, Peculiar People Thursdays right. at eight or eight thirty. Tell yeah, 830. tell us eight thirty. Tell us when it is. It's um, Thursday nights at eight thirty to nine thirty. I know it's a little late, but um trying to get the youngins you know what yeah. i'm saying and what kind of platforms can they listen to you um, on Where? we have facebook um you can't listen to us on instagram but you can connect with us on instagram mm -hmm. and get updates we're on youtube wucc studio wucc right um and then also cwchrist.com we're live streamed there as well you can always catch them on the radio oh, yeah. oh yes and the radio yes. obviously 99.9 <laughs> wucc right That's here right, right here, here. Yes. yeah and, okay, then, and there's a rebroadcast too even off of here yeah i think it's on fridays at three okay i believe okay. maybe so y'all <laughs> investigate peculiar people her 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 They're her peculiar. show itself is um then it's named from what the bible says we are as that's believers right. we're peculiar yes, that's right so i challenge you to that's dig so in and look at all the shows that are part of wucc you know check them out because yeah. if you need bible teaching you need to understand more about scripture this is a great place to get mm -hmm. the information that's right the people here come with their heart full to share mm -hmm. that's right okay now our focus tonight is about the return that happened on the 26th mm -hmm. the very next day our pastor on the 27th that sunday delivered a message called the return at the gates mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he called it the return plus one um what what the return's purpose is is for america to turn back to god each individual heart so our focus is about your heart and where it is today. Mm -hmm. I want to play a, a, about a 10 minute, maybe seven minute section of this sermon. And I just want you to sit back and listen. <clears throat> um, but before we do that, I want to read Jeremiah 1, 1 through 5. Jeremiah. Okay, so, um, and I had, I had brought my NIV to read it that way as well. But, of course, I walked off and left it on my bed. So, please forgive me because, um, you know, sometimes we need to hear it in another version. So, um, the Lord had led me the day after this sermon to read Jeremiah 6 and 7 because I... <clears throat> There was some information in there he had for me. So I want to encourage you to spend some time in this first part of Jeremiah because there's a lot of really good nuggets here. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1, and I'm going to read 1 through 4, I believe. <clears throat> the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah. That enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Now, don't be confused because what he's saying here is a lot of people wait for Sunday because they, you know, they got to get their Sunday on. They're going to live the way they want to Monday through Saturday. Right. But they got to mm -hmm. get their Sunday on. So mm -hmm. this is this this verse is a warning about it's not about the place. It's not even about mm -hmm. the people that you. Yes. Fellowshipping with the Lord. We should not forsake. We should we should make sure we do that. And we do need to be with our brothers and sisters. 
but that's not where our intimacy with the Lord is supposed to start. That's right. right. So this 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 uh, sermon and what he brings out here is for us to make sure we understand that our hearts is what the Lord is speaking to. That the return, the point of the return is to clean up your life, make some decisions, decide where you are in this walk and what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Yes. How are you going to do this thing? Yes. How are you going to walk this thing out? All right, so I'm going to move to the video. Uh, if y'all got anything to add, please do. Um, the point also for hit for pastor when he did this was to know, you know, that your worship, your prayers, your sacrifices, because this is the Old Testament. They did right. sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You know, the discipline and correction that the, that God gives you does you no good if your heart's not right. Right. Before him. So this is the warning. And I want to be sure that each of you know this. I'm kind of giving you my notes in this and giving you the, you know, the the full Monty. I want you to understand what, why I'm kind of cutting out a lot part of this message so that you understand you need to hear this. Right. You really need to hear this. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know how long <laughs> we're going to be quiet, but you were talking about your heart and you know, the Bible says that it judges the intent of the heart it's spinning, and we, so we can talking. look at spinning demon. You'd cast <laughs> it out. I hate it. <laughs> um, but you can look like you are doing all the right things and you and you actually are, but unless your heart has turned, you know, I can come to church and even be in ministry, but my heart can still desire ungodly things. Right. My heart can still, you know, want to go and do, want to go and sin. I mean, it doesn't mean, yes, we all have a tendency to sin. We all want to do the, the follow the flesh, but we have to have a heart's desire to turn yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm learning. I can't help how I feel, you know, mm -hmm. right. I can't help how I feel. Right. And I've, I have sat down before God before. I can't help how I feel. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you anywhere near me. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel, but I make a choice mm -hmm. to serve you. And I want that desire back because he says he will give you the desires of mm -hmm. your heart. If you don't have it, mm -hmm. ask him for it. Yes. That's right. Yes. At, set your mind and your will mm -hmm. and ask him for it. Don't wait for the feeling to come. Don't wait for the emotions mm -hmm. to come. Because that's not where he's at. Mm -hmm. That's your flesh. All right, this is he's our in pastor, your spirit. Henry Schaefer, I want you to listen to him for about seven, eight minutes. That we're in that time frame now of Yom Kippur. We're all in that time frame. Isn't it amazing? This was on September 27th. Here we are. Two weeks ago. And understanding that. Almost two weeks ago. Jeremiah mm -hmm. is told to stand at the gates where the people are going to return to Jerusalem. See, they're gonna, they're been out away and they're there now and Jer Jeremiah is positioned at the gates of the city, at a certain gate. Really, they believe it's the eastern gate. That would be the gate where Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> but they believe at this time, this is where he would be positioned at. He wasn't positioned in the temple. He was positioned at the gates of the city. And men would return three times a year to approach and to be able to come to the people. To, they were going to go into the Lord's temple. And they were going to come to worship the Lord. But in the time of Jeremiah, Solomon's temple had only like six gates. Three went to the outer court, went through the inner courts where the high altar stood and there was the temple. This may have been one of the gates that he may go through to get to this outer gate here. The temple was a place where they came to hear the word of the Lord, to offer their sacrifices. Jeremiah's message was a scathing indictment to the people who were going to come. There wasn't three, there wasn't gonna, he wasn't going to slap them on their back and tell them how good they had been. But he was positioned there to tell and to deliver a message. Here's what he said. He says, your worship does you no good. He also told him that your prayers do you no good. Mm. He said, 
The third thing is your sacrifices do you no good. And the discipline and the correction that God gives does you no good. Jeremiah calls the people to consider how that they worship the Lord. And what would constitute real worship. He also gives them the ideas and the understanding that they needed to repair certain things. Now, if, that's, if this is true in this time, and we as a nation recognize that this is true for us as well. And it has come to the, to the point to where there are people who have gathered together across this nation. I mean, they spent, I know, tell me how many millions of dollars putting this thing together to draw the people to a place where people could pray. And I stand as Jeremiah stands. I stand and I tell you this here, that without true repentance and without obedience to God's words, all the worship that was done yesterday, all the praying that was done yesterday, Every word that was spoken in, in, without true worship, it does us no good. Unless we turn with hearts. See, I didn't hear, I didn't hear this message. And I'm telling you what God says. I didn't hear this message. Not like this. Praying without repentance. And praying and seeking God without Obedience means nothing. And Jeremiah chapter 7 tells us this. It's a scary thing when you read Jeremiah 7. I pray that people who heard yesterday, I pray that I, I, I hope that people hear the message. Return plus one. And he said, don't go inside the temple. Jeremiah, I don't want you to stand inside the church and preach this. He says, I want you to stand out at the road hmm. as people are driving down the street, getting ready to turn into the church parking lot. And as they're getting ready to turn off the main road and walk into my sanctuary, tell them it's worthless and it's useless to go into that place and worship the Lord and sing sacrifices and praises and whatever you do unless there's a heart of repentance and obedience to every person who walks off that main road and turn into a place like this. That was the message. That was the message that the people needed to hear and that God delivered through a man called Jeremiah. And I'm telling you this here. Somebody says, well, I, and I'm going to show you some things that, well, I don't know if I'm going to show them to you or not. I don't, th I don't think you're ready for it. I absolutely don't think you are ready for the things that God wants to shake up. We're talking about God used Jeremiah to shake up Judah. He told them, go back and look at Shiloh. Shiloh was the place where they put the tent and the Ark of the Covenant at. He says, you don't think I won't do something to you here in Jerusalem? Go back and look what I did to Shiloh. He said, they're not even there anymore. I destroyed Shiloh. That's the message Jeremiah had to deliver. Now look at this here. I can preach this. You know, we could do a, we could do a real simple Bible study. And I can get through this real quick. We just read the scripture. Hopefully you'll understand it. Hopefully you'll put the pieces together. But most of the time it doesn't work like that. Because people want to read it. They're reading the Bibles through eyes of sin. They read the scripture through eyes of religion. They read the scriptures through eyes of adultery and fornication. They read the scripture through through eyes of political glasses. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about political in our country. I'm talking about preachers who are political in church and are afraid and they're playing politics because they are afraid to preach the truth to the healthy tithe donors and they're playing politics with people's lives in church. 
That's what I'm talking about. All right, that's our pastor, Pastor Henry Schaefer. We go to University Parkway Church of God, (laughs) and I'm here to tell y'all, if you haven't got a place to go, I'm inviting you there. If you're going to church, I encourage you, if you are not being corrected in the places in your life where you are wrong, get out of that church and find a place near you that's teaching the true word of God. I love the fact that God rearranged my whole life. He moved me out of Charleston where my buddy Elizabeth is and got me all the way here up under this pastor. I'm telling y'all, it's been worth every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Everything that I have experienced has been, God knew what he was doing. I didn't know what God was doing, but God knew what he was doing. First, Mm -hmm. we thought we were here because of Walter's sister. Then we thought we were here because of the job or both. But both that job and that sister are not the reason. They're, they're, they're both gone. Mm-hmm. Neither one of them are here anymore. But the church is the reason. God used Amen. those catalysts to bring us here. So I know that this is a harsh message. I know that this is heavy. Mm-hmm. But here's what I want to say. If you cannot handle the truth, yep. and if this shakes you up, well, you know, you're probably not going to make it. Mm. And I'm just going to be real when I say this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to feel good. It doesn't have to make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Mm -hmm. But what it does, Mm -hmm. what the point of it is, is to reach, crack the hard shell of your heart. Yeah. That... That harsh exterior that protects you from the rest of the world. God's not trying to hurt you. That's right. He's right. trying to wake you up. Mm-hmm. He's trying and to shake up the things in your life. Right. And get you on the right path. That's Ultimately, right. it's about, you know, the Bible says to work out your own salvation. Yes, it does. Ultimately, it's about. With fear and trembling. When I stand mm-hmm. before the Lord, will he know <laughs> it me? It doesn't say warm and fuzzy, does it? Right. <laughs> well, will you know me? And yeah. mm-hmm. will you know me, Jesus, when uh, I stand before yeah. you? I don't want to be, you know, he starts separating the sheep from the goats. I don't want to be a goat. That's right. I, right. I want to be a sheep. I want to live eterni- eternally mm-hmm. in the presence of God. Yes. And there's a purpose in all of this in the earth. There's a kingdom coming that's not going to just be in somewhere out there. It's coming to this earth. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in this earth. Kingdom people, kingdom children. And that's what it's all about. When I close my eyes at night, God, am I, am I right with you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Have you have I done what you asked me to do today? Because right. nothing, nothing, and I tell a lot of people this: I'm not going to hell for you, and I'm not going to jail for you. <laughs> Anything else, you know, we can we might talk about, but I'm not going to hell for you. In other words, don't don't make me sin. Don't try to tempt me. Don't mm-hmm. try to pull me down that road because nothing or nobody is worth. Mm-hmm and Mm -hmm. eternity in hell and away from God. And see, I came out of the world into the church. And one of the things that would, that would people, friends around me, people would say is, Oh, I ain't going to church. All my friends are going to hell. I'm telling you right now, that is a secular saying, Mm -hmm. and it is not the truth. I mean, it is a defensive mechanism that somebody's saying because they just don't want to bend their knee to the Mm -hmm. truth. But don't well, when buy you learn that what lie. hell is really like. Yeah, don't buy that lie. Yeah, don't right. buy you don't want to go, and you don't want your friends to go. That's well, right. on Saturday before the message, we were at a memorial service. Yes, we were. And I was sitting in the back pew, and Cassie was sitting by me, and all of a sudden, God said, "You're you don't have your seatbelt on," and it was so strong that I reached up to pull my seatbelt and looked down at the chair. Mm-hmm to fast it and realized I'm not in the car. <laughs> I'm sitting in church. Mm-hmm. And I, I told Cassie, I said, God just told me I don't have my seatbelt on. Yeah. Buckle up. And yeah. she said, well, you better buckle up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the next, Brace yourself. and then Sunday pastors talking about the church being shaken up. Mm-hmm. So when that happened, I looked at Rachel. I said, that's why he told me to fast my seatbelt. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And the same day, <clears throat> Shortly after that, I was riding in the car with my friend and I just got out of my car and gotten into hers and I was showing them something on Facebook and so I didn't buckle up. And that's so odd of me because that's like the first thing I do when I get in the car. Mm -hmm. And she said, Cassie, you don't have your seatbelt on. And I was like, 
Oh, yeah, God, I don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it was just so like I remembered what I didn't remember what had happened to Connie until I talked to Rachel on Sunday. And it just kind of all clicked that that is what God has been saying. Put your seatbelt on. Okay. And after listening, after listening to you and you mm-hmm. say what you'd said, God reminded me, the Holy Ghost reminded me that Thursday on the way to work, which was before your Saturday thing mm-hmm. and your Saturday mm-hmm. thing and this event Sunday and, and pastor making sure we understand mm-hmm. God's going to do this thing in your life. Get ready. Yeah. And, and, and the Lord reminded me sitting there yeah. as pastor starts delivering this message Sunday morning, the Lord reminded me that Thursday I was about halfway to work and the Lord said, you don't have your seatbelt on. Mm. And I mean, and I didn't reach for it, but I was like, I knew I was in the car by myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I mean, yeah. I was like, yeah, you're yeah. right. And I did. I put it on immediately, but I was driving and Mm -hmm. I typically do. I put it on before, like I'm leaving the driveway. Um, And for mm -hmm. whatever reason that day, I just did not. Yeah. I'm halfway down the road before I put my seatbelt on. No, see, I'm always put my seatbelt on. I don't. I'm just, but I was going to say, God is going to deal with us in the church individually, shaking Mm -hmm. us individually. You know, judgment comes to the the church first. (laughs) So I have been in this shaking for months. Yeah. And mm-hmm. frankly, you know, I'm ready for it to be done. Yeah, with. I'm good when he's good. when he starts shaking and what's what's left, you know, what's yeah. left, yeah, what, whatever's left, Lord, after right. the shaking, please use it. Yeah, whatever's yeah. left. Yeah, I've so. been I'm being shaken a lot, um, a lot, a lot. I started a long time ago, and um, someone gave me this word that said they saw me, and it was like God had me by my ankles. And he was emptying out my pockets Mm. and he was healing hurt. I didn't know I had, and he was shaking everything. And like, I've been feeling the pinnacle of all that happening these past two weeks. And I'm like, Oh God, if you just get me through this, we're going to be all right. And he just told me just now that we're almost there, which is so, so good for me because I'm dying. (laughs) Yeah. It's, we talk about it and we smile about it, but when you're really going through it, you wonder, you wonder if y'all saw me Sunday, I was dying. You wonder who you are. It yeah. really what makes you wonder who you are. And if you, for me, okay, from how I speak for myself, where I've been is, am I even saved? What checking my Hallelujah. shaking me mm-hmm. and sifting me? I think that's the right kind of question. Checking to be my asking heart. Ourselves. Yeah. Why that's, have you been coming to church? That's yeah. exactly right. What yeah. is your motivation? Yeah, for me, scary. it was all about my motives. When he shows you who you are. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You better pay attention. That's right. Because that's what needs to be crucified. In that's Jesus what needs name. to die. That's right. And it's not pretty. It hurts yeah. like hell. Yeah. Excuse and me. it's it's very we un- the disclaimer. Right. Yes. We did. Thank you. It's very <laughs> uncomfortable and that's what God has been teaching me. Very. Um that this is so uncomfortable and it's more than just me getting out of my comfort zone. It's about me getting out of myself mm-hmm. and realizing that I cannot do what God's calling me to do in my flesh or yes, in my spirit or in anything like I can't do it by myself. I have to be completely yielded, completely obedient. I can't worry about what people think of me because right. I mean, he's gonna make me look crazy. That's Kill right. you. Well, we and, back, we yeah. back the right there <laughs> And it's with just, you. and it's all about not being in my comfort zone, but just not being comfortable in general mm-hmm. because he's moving so much. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's painful, and I haven't had a good time, and I am ready for the shaking to stop, but. I'm excited because I know God is working. Um, Cassie, the same thing you're saying is the same thing I've been going through. Mm-hmm. And Sunday, I got a word that my storm, God said my storm is, is over. Which is hallelujah. Well, we're going to get in your boat then. And, uh, <laughs> Can I get in your boat? <laughs> yes. so, and ever since that, I have been a complete mess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good mess. Yeah. Ju- he just said, I'll read it. He said, Cassie, I've not forgotten you. The verse is still true. And he's talking about Jeremiah 1, 5. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. I have called you. I love you, sweet child. Be strong and of good courage. Courage, we are almost there. And well, I was about to cry yeah. right here because I needed that. I didn't I know how I was going to make it to the end of the night. I received a similar oh, word yeah. uh, over the week. You know, God, she said, I just heard this from the Lord. God wants you to know he does love you. Mm-hmm. He does not want you to be deceived. And he does not want you to be shamed. Hallelujah. And after what I Hallelujah. just discovered, like the day before, is exactly what I felt, which I had been deceived. Right. And I felt ashamed. Mm-hmm. But I'm also reminded, did Jesus not tell Peter? That's right. 
Satan desires to sift you as wheat. Yes. But I have already prayed for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I have already prayed for you. And mm-hmm. I've heard that many times. You know, I've received literally that word from a person saying Satan desires to sift you as wheat. Mm-hmm. Well, that's okay because Jesus has already prayed That's for me. right. And That's if right. Jesus has already prayed for me, I know I'm coming yeah. out. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this I repentance. I think the devil heard that. That's right. This repentance <laughs> thing um, has been really heavy on my heart and it's yes. been so personal. And for me, it's not about turning from my wicked ways because I'd already done that. But it was about ironing out the last little fleshly bits of my heart Mm -hmm. and yielding it to God. And that was way more painful Mm -hmm. than any other (laughs) repenting that I had ever done because I, it was a lot of defense mechanisms and a lot of just, this is how I've always been. And the devil and, wants to condemn you for yeah. what you discovered. You yeah. Know, that and part I'm of like, your flesh. oh, well, which is to shave like, it the off. The more God. I get, dig up, the more I dig up. <laughs> so, something my granddaddy used to say is this whole getting old thing. It ain't for wimps, you know, and no, exactly. he, made it, he made it to 94. Okay. No. So I've kind of gr- taken that statement and stuck it to this thing, this walk with the Lord, this thing, when you're really honest and you're and you're raw, standing naked before the Lord, yeah. an audience of one, naked. you're just naked. I mm-hmm. mean, you come you come naked, you're leaving naked. You're not taking none of the stuff you got with you. No. It, it, you just can't. Yeah, but you know, and and we forget. I think we forget that sometimes. Yeah. I think that it get, you know stuff gets in our way. So you know, I'm saying this walk this mm-hmm. thing it just ain't for wimps no. you're, you're called to be a warrior yeah. we do not wrestle with flesh and blood we right. wrestle with powers and principalities and rules of this dark world and That's yes right. that is the focus of this show but all of that is no good if your heart is not if right you're not the surrendered Lord, That's if right. you're not completely submitted to yeah. his authority and know who you are yeah. none of that does you any good That's right. and he's going to show you who you are before mm-hmm. you can find out who you are in him That's right. and, and try not to get lost in condemned and in the process is a, is where you need each other right and, mm-hmm. and you know another thing that i want to share that my granddaddy would say he 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 and my husband walter had a, a unique relationship and i'm so thankful for walter because had hey, it walter. not had it not been for walter there was a lot there would have been a lot of things that just would have not been well with my grandfather because he needed a man mm-hmm. and i was the granddaughter and walter just stepped up and did things but one of the things my granddaddy would say when Walter would get it from the table and go back to the kitchen, he'd say, he's a two-timer. <laughs> and I'd say, what do you mean by that, granddaddy? He's talking about, he's, he, he's a two-time eater. He always goes back for more. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, today, the Lord reminded me that my granddaddy used to say that about Walter, but the Lord said to me Mm -hmm. that I was a two-time eater of his Mm -hmm. word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Walter is a two-time eater of his word that we will go back through what we've learned. Mm -hmm. We'll go back through and make sure we get that meal. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm. My heart is, and our heart as a battle ready team, is to make sure that if you missed anything on the 26th, yeah, you get yes. it right. That you're gonna get it today. If, yeah. if 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 it didn't make sense to you on the 27th, if you were sitting in the church and you heard this message, and there were parts of this you missed, you know, a lot of times I'm there. I'm a worshiper. I'm also responsible for a lot of things at the church. So sometimes. I, my whole person is not involved in what's being said because I'm taking notes and the Holy ghost is talking Mm -hmm. or I'm flying a flag or I'm just worshiping, worshiping the Lord. So I'm not able to take all of it in. So I'll make a habit of going back on Sunday afternoon or Monday and listening to the service again. And there are other people that I do that with, um, Sandra Kennedy in, you know, uh, at whole life ministries is another one, um, that I very much love. So I want, I want you listeners out there to understand and I want to encourage you to be a two-time eater of the Word of God, mm-hmm. to to ask the Lord, what is it that He's asking of you in this hour? What is it in your life that is not right? Mm-hmm. What is it that you're doing that is right? Because yeah. see, we as much as we can ask for or pray in our authority that the um, word curses Mm -hmm. spoken over us be broken we also can call forth those generational blessings the generational curses are true but the generational blessings are as well so what is it that you have that you're doing wrong and what is it that you have in your life that you're doing right Right. there's always a time for reassessment you know and to make sure that you um you know dot your i's and cross your t's if 
if, if there's something missing, the way that shalom is said in Jewish, nothing in Hebrew, mm -hmm. okay. they say shalom. And what that mm -hmm. means is nothing they missing, miss, nothing, nothing broken. broken. Mm -hmm. So Hallelujah. my Love prayer it. for you as a part of our battle ready family is that there'll be nothing missing and mm -hmm. nothing broken mm -hmm. in yeah. your life. Yeah. Um, so uh, from my notes on Sunday, the 27th. I wrote down, I don't know if Pastor gave this Psalms, but I wrote it down. It's Psalms 51, and I'm going to read it. Go ahead, girl. Um, and it's a Pardon and Purity Psalms by David. And you're reading it out of what version? Uh, the Passion Translation, Hallelujah, so get ready Jesus. to cry. Okay, <laughs> um, and this is David's confession mm -hmm, David. after yeah. Bathsheba, so mm -hmm. context is important. See, it's yeah. about repentance. That's right, yeah, that's, that's right. right. God gave me mercy from your fountain of forgiveness. I know your abundant love is enough to wash away my guilt because your compassion is so great. Take away this shameful guilt of sin. Forgive the full extent of my rebellious ways and ease the deep stain on my conscience. For I am so ashamed. I feel such pain and anguish within me. I can't get away from the stinging of my sin against you, Lord. Mm. Everything I did, I did Jesus. right in front of you. Right. For you mm -hmm. saw it all. Against you and you above all have I sinned. Everything you say to me is infallibly true, and your judgment conquers me. Yeah. Lord, I have been a sinner from birth from the moment my mother conceived me. I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. Mm -hmm. So come into the hidden places of my heart mm -hmm. and teach me wisdom. Purify my conscience. Make this leper clean again. Wash me in your love until I am pure in heart. Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song of joy will, will return. The places where you have where you have crushed will rejoice in your healing touch mm -hmm. hide my sins from your face erase all my guilt by your saving grace create a new Jesus. clean heart within me fill my pure thoughts and holy desires ready to please you may you never reject me may you never take me from your sacred spirit and then hallelujah. it continues on but i'll just stop there hallelujah Fantastic. Yes. now we have permission to go on beyond this hour if y'all want to we don't have to um but we have that permission any of you there that are on facebook if you want to join us on facebook we will end on the radio if we continue to go we're at a pivotal point where we need to decide and i want to read a piece of scripture so if i can get this out we'll mm -hmm. end this okay okay so, get it out okay. girl all right, <clears throat> Psalm 146. I'm speaking to the intercessors out there. Um, several years ago, um, the Lord told me to pray this psalm over the radio station and the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. So it is Psalm 146, and I'm going to read the whole thing. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being put not your trust in princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help his breath go goeth forth his he returneth to his earth in that very day his thoughts perish happy is he that hath the god of jacob for his help whose hope is in the lord his god which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which ex executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth, looseth the prisoners. Verse mm -hmm. 8. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. Yes, the Lord God. raiseth them that are bowed down. And the Lord loveth the righteous. Verse 9. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He revileth. I mean, he re relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. down. Yes. My favorite Side part of this down. verse. And 10. <laughs> the Lord shall reign oh, yes. forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, <laughs> praise ye the Lord. I want to encourage you out there in Radio Land to lift up your desires before mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes. Acknowledge him in yes. all of your ways. Amen. 
And he will give you those desires. But he has to come first. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. We're coming to you live from WUCC 99.9 on Friday night. It is 8 o'clock and we are going to end this show tonight. I encourage you to go back and watch the show, um, the sermon. I will put it in the feed. Um, You will have access to it both by Facebook and YouTube on Mm -hmm. our Battle Ready page. Mm -hmm. And we'll share it on our other platforms as well. Mm -hmm. Have a supernatural week. We love y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Good night, night, guys. Don't give up. We love you. Bye. Bye for now. Okay. I can't see.